Hey guys, Jeff here, and before we get to today's episode, I wanted to let you know about our Season 4 sponsor, Adventure is Out There Travel. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a pretty good chance that you're in the middle of planning your next Disney vacation right now. So why not make it easier for yourself? By working with an Adventure is Out There travel agent, you'll be having an experienced vacation planner doing the heavy lifting for you. Adventures Out There Travel specializes in making sure your entire group gets to experience the type of activities they want in order to make your trip even more magical. Whether heading to a Walt Disney World vacation in Orlando, flying west to Disneyland, or floating on the high seas in a Disney cruise, Adventures Out There Travel can help you plan the vacation of a lifetime. Visit AdventuresOutThereTravel.com for your free, no-obligation quote today. Now on with the show! Do you dream of fairies and princesses? Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Tracy Hines. Hello, Tracy Hines. Hello. You know what it means if you're here? It's princess time. Yay! Are you ready for some princess pondering? I am so ready. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Princess Pondering. Excellent. So who will we be talking about today? <laughs> Mother Gothel. Yes. I love Mother Gothel. <laughs> and Rapunzel. Rapunzel, yeah. Tangled. Punzy. Yes. Yeah, you've probably heard of this film. Uh, I gotta be honest though, although I love this movie, definitely not like some of the previous ones we've talked about that I've seen over and over and over again. Like it, oh. those were like you know, Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, I was that perfect age. Yeah. Or I've seen it a billion times. This one, not so much. I saw it in theaters, uh, more specifically at Walt Disney Animation Studios. Oh, snap. And, but I remember seeing it and being like, oh, we're at the beginning of another renaissance. Like, yeah. I haven't seen an animated film from Disney like this in a long time. I cried. For sure, I cried. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. Now, some people would disagree with the comment I just made. Some people say Tiana, uh, Princess and the Frog. Was I the cried star. in that one too. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's, I, I, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you go first. I was gonna say I love Princess and the Frog. I just when I say it wasn't the beginning of the Renaissance, it's because I'm talking about box office. Like that yeah. one didn't do. That wasn't like ooh, Walt Disney Animation is, is back for the general public. Right. Tangled. I feel like ooh, Walt Disney Animation is back. But some people will say it wasn't really until Frozen that they feel that that happened. For me, it's Tangled. Mm, I for me, it's Tangled. Also, yeah. I love Princess and the Frog. Um, me too. But yeah, I saw it in like an empty theater, and I was like, "Where is everybody? This is amazing!" And it's 2D. Yeah. Which I mean, that's what we grew up with. That's like my nostalgia. And, yeah. You know, when when Tangled came out. I, it was. I'm still getting used to that that look. It's, still getting used to it. I still it's been am. a while. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I I do love it, but it took me a bit to kind of adjust. Yeah, because it definitely is a different feel. Um, but I mean, once you get into the movie, I I loved it so much, and I think they look beautiful. Like it looks amazing. It's yeah. just it's different, you know. And I'm like, I don't always do well with change. Yeah. But when I heard, um, I, you know, I see the light. Remember when they kind of leaked it? Um, well, earlier. It's before, interesting. Though, I don't know if they leaked it, but it came out pretty early before the movie came out, and I heard a version of it. I remember a lot it being really marketed as a non-musical because this was before musicals were popular again. They're trying to get girls They're, and boys yeah. into the theater. Yeah. So it was really not. I mean, we all knew Alan Menken wrote music for it, but. It was not like hit you over the head, this is a musical. Same way they did the same thing with Frozen. It was mm. not obvious that it was a musical. Um, I don't remember them releasing that song early, but oh, I believe I, Yeah, I, I remember, and I, I just started crying when I heard it because I was like, this is Alan Menken. Like, mm. this is my Disney. Okay, well, let's just talk about that for a second because that was the biggest thing, which is why it really frustrated me when they weren't promoting it as a musical because I'm like, this is the return of an Alan Menken Disney animated musical. Yeah. It had been a long time, ladies and gentlemen. So at, now he had worked continuously with Disney, mm -hmm. but it had been a long gap since like the last full on musical he did with them. Enchanted he did in 2007. Um, <laughs> but you can't really, I'm not counting that because it's not animated. And uh, It is animated. Well, just the beginning. We have to do a Giselle episode at some point. Fair enough. Um, <sighs> but... Let's see. So Tangled was 2010, right? Yeah, 2010. Is it? Yeah. yeah. 
And Jenna was 2007, so that was three years. And like I said, I don't really count that one. Before that Uh, was Home on the Range, which was 2004, uh, which most people don't really count. Uh, (laughs) Hercules was 1997. Wow. So really, if you're thinking about like hit animated Disney Alan Menken musical, it goes from Hercules in 97 to Tangled in 2010. That is a massive gap. We missed you, Alan. <laughs> oh, my goodness, did we miss him. Don't ever leave us again. <laughs> Seriously. It, it scares me when that happens. Yeah. But, like, I was <clears throat> ready for that. And I do want to mention yeah. Glenn, Glenn Slater wrote the lyrics. Uh, I, mm. I give so much credit to Alan Menken, but he always has a lovely lyricist with him. Yes. Uh, yes. So Glenn Slater wrote the lyrics. But, yeah, it, I mean, that was a huge draw for me. Alan Menken's back. It, it definitely, I felt the hype. When Tangled came out, like, I felt the hype, you know? And yeah. I, I didn't feel that for the other couple of Disney movies I saw before that. It mm-hmm. felt like the beginning of something, you yeah. know? And then obviously Frozen was, like, exponentially more. But I I personally, I love, I, I love Tangled. I love Frozen, too, but I love Tangled a lot more. Me, too. I think Tangled is far superior to yeah, Frozen. I agree. Um, yeah, it's now... One thing about this film that I find real, of course, classic Disney, there's always an animal sidekick. Yes. I just rewatched this movie because we we're doing this episode, but um, how necessary is Pascal? I love him. Stop. But I've never you know seen... that I like have pet chameleons. Okay, he's useless in this film. I'm sorry. I am so offended right now. <laughs> I said nothing against your chameleons. No, but like, like I feel like usually the sidekicks have more than just little comic moments. I feel like they. Sunk. What did you want from? Uh, I, what did I you mean, want from him that he didn't give you? My problem was the fact that he could be completely deleted from the film and it wouldn't <gasps> affect it whatsoever. Lies. Other than a couple of chuckles. Lies. All right. Well, what did you like so much about him? No, I just He's love He's adorable, the, but... I love the cuteness and the comedic relief and, like, his little thing with uh, Maximus is super cute. Like, I just... I love, you know, I think we need him. I'm going to start paying attention because this may be the case with like all of the little animal sidekicks. Maybe I've just never noticed this before. Maybe they're all really unnecessary Mm. other than for comedy and cuteness and stuffed animals. Think about like Flounder. Yeah, but Flounder, he, see, see, that's the he thing. He did a lot. Yeah. He did a lot. He did. He was so, a part of it. So that's kind of where But I'm he also from. was kind of, he was more of a friend than even a sidekick, though, if you think about it. He was less of a sidekick. I mean, he, he is, but... I don't. I don't know. Like he he talks. It That's just different. it just seemed like to me. I think it, about like Miko in Pocahontas and like. Yeah, I don't. It's know. comedy. I'd have to go back and look at that one to see if they really affect the story. I just don't feel like he affected the story in any way, and it's okay. Yeah, I think he's adorable. Don't send me hate mail. I mean, but mail. we established in Moana that to be a Disney princess, you have to have that animal sidekick. It's true. And talk about animal sidekicks that are, that are just as worthless. They exist in Moana. Uh, yeah. Putting that out there. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Give, but uh, well, uh, pretty useless. That rooster? She helps, she helps a little bit. She? She, I don't know. He, yeah, she. I don't know. She, sure. Yeah. I, I tried. Um, yeah. I've only seen that one once. What did the pig do in that movie? Pua. Oh, useless. Useless. But so cute. Stuffed animals. We needed more Pua. We ladies, definitely, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, stuffed animals. Yeah. Dollar we'll do a We'll do a Moana episode and we'll come back around to that. But we'll <laughs> anyways, I love Pascal. Okay, I'm good. I'm glad. So much so that I have had my own Pascals. I like that. It, he did inspire my having pet chameleons because I've always loved chameleons, but it, it kind of pushed me over the edge to like do it. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so I, I really, truly do love this movie. I'm nitpicking with the Pascal thing. Um, <laughs> do you have any favorite moments or favorite scenes in this film? I see the light. Uh, well, I was gonna say let's try and stay away from the musical moments. I'm sorry, just- no, but it is though. Truly, like that is the scene that I well and. I always I can't not cry when she hugs her dad. You cry a lot. I'm not a crier. That's what. So see, funny. I think the reason why is I I like expect you guys to like know me super well. I know you you don't, but like I'm not a crier 
very like in my day to day life, I'm just not. I'm I'm an emotional person. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think I cry at entertainment more than I do in real life, I, which yeah. is really sad. But why is that? It's so weird. I don't know. But no, but it for me, you know, if I cry during a Disney movie, I know it's like, I know it's special to yeah, me. You for know, sure. um, and it made like a it made a mark. So I don't know. To me, like. Uh, the music obviously is very emotional, but when she hugs her parents, and and she has parents like she has parents that don't <laughs> die, ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler. Like round of applause for that. Like yeah, I was thinking about this. Like oh my goodness, her parents aren't dead. Yeah, this is awesome. Good for Rapunzel. I was so happy. It's it's really sweet. And then I I love the snuggly duckling. Mm-hmm. So much. See, I, hate I have it. a dream. I know. The, oh, I, I, really? It, it's my least. It's probably <gasps> my least favorite Alan Menken song of all time. Oh, I really love it. I think it's super cute, it's super fun. You have to have like a fun, you know, it's a charm song. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have it though. All right. So one of my favorite moments in this film. I'm trying to stay away from musical moments at this point because I know we'll get to the music. But I know when her. I don't know if you'll remember this when her feet touch the ground, the grass for the first time. Mm-hmm. I just had like a light bulb moment. Also a song. Is that also a, a song? It's, just feel the grass, the dirt. Oh, that's true. It's it's all true. the big moments They're happen almost, in song. Okay, well, so specifically like, that moment, I was yeah. just like, oh my goodness, she's never felt grass before. <laughs> Not that she remembers <laughs> so anyway. Sad. Like, I, well, it was really sad. I was yeah. Like, like, that's pathetic yet beautiful. Oh. Um, it's it, super funny though too. That scene. Yeah, it's it's super funny. It's a really funny movie. Actually, one of my favorite things about this movie is the fact that it's um, it's like got modern. I don't want to say modern comedy, but it's eh, it feels it's got modern. modern comedy. But it's not like Shrek where it dates itself immediately. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a good mix of classic fairy tale mm-hmm. and modern comedy, like Flynn especially, who narrates the story, which is yeah. kind of the pull the boys in, gotta get the little boys to like this stuff, um, which I think is an interesting choice. It's totally her story, but I really like that this particular movie. I don't know. To me, it it has everything, and it's not just a princess story. Totally. Like it is very. There's so much comedy. I'm obsessed with like Maximus. I think he's so funny, and Flynn, and yeah. like the whole dynamic between the two of them, and with you know Pascal. Like I don't know. I think there's a lot of really like funny elements that make it that set it apart from like your classic princess fairy tale. Yeah, and you she's know? strong. She's like a cool. She's a cool princess. Uh, yeah, and a little derpy, which I love. I mean, derpy? I know with what Anna, does derpy we have. Mean? Derpy. Derpy? Like silly. She's she's a little silly. All right. The, I just learned a word. Oh, you've never heard derpy? Derpy? No, D-E-R-P-Y? Yeah. Ladies and like gentlemen. Derp? You guys, come on. <laughs> like, you guys, comment below if you've heard the word derpy before. Yeah, I'm sure I'm just uh, <laughs> uh, out of touch here. Never heard derpy. Or maybe I just say super weird words. That's I don't cool. know. Hey. but. I but because it. she's silly. Like, I like that she's got um, just, yeah, such a big personality. She's, you know. She's more modern that way because I feel like we are more silly mm-hmm. nowadays. I don't know. Uh, yes, yeah, or we're encouraged to be sillier. I love it. The uh, a great moment, hilarious moment of hers is when <laughs> when she escapes and she has like that bipolar moment of that's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. free, and then she's like, "Oh no, I can't oh. believe I did this! I can't believe I did this! I can't believe!" Yeah, and so good, so cute, super derpy. And did the I, guilt, though. Did it's I like, use that correctly? Yeah, All good right. job. Cool. You are welcome. Am I derpy? N- no. Do you have to be a girl to be derpy? No. Oh, okay. You can you can be derpy, but like derpy's Anna. If you think about how silly oh, she is. Oh, yeah, yeah. How she's like super klutzy and like, like think of like Sailor Moon. She's derpy. All right. That's derpy. Uh, in my opinion, at All, least. All girls she mentioned, by the way. But guys can be derpy, too. Give me a derpy but, guy. Oh, gosh. Um... Mm, Inspector Gadget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could work. He's derpy. Yeah, like <laughs> this is the weirdest conversation. <laughs> Donald, du- no, Donald not Donald Duck. Duck. He's like angry all the time. Yeah, I'll think on this. All right, Goofy. Goofy could be derpy. Okay, he could be derpy. Yeah, uh, he's a dog, but still, he's a male dog, so that works. Yeah. Derpy. Uh, the word of the day. <laughs> uh, I love it when she shoves Flynn in the closet when he's like yeah. dead body. Such a great He would moment. not survive that in real life, like all of that. Let's test that. Let's make a YouTube no. video of it. And <laughs> a Mythbusters episode. Oh, there we we'll go. Call up Grant. <laughs> Isn't that, sh- that shows off the air now. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, we'll bring I it back. So. Actually, yeah. I think they, they're looking for the next generation of MythBusters. I think. Mm. I think. Uh, so hey, there we go. I love it. <laughs> and um, the Smolder, of course. I yes. mean, is he the first prince with facial hair? I think. I think so. I kind of love that for some reason. Yeah. I, I'm not like a facial hair guy. I don't really like facial hair. I'm not a facial hair. But for hair some girl. reason, I'm like Flynn. Kind of looks awesome with face. Like he makes him cooler than every other prince. I feel like he also. Okay, maybe this is just me, but he looks like a mix of um uh the directors of oh Byron Howard uh, and, and Nathan and... Greno, a little bit. Like I feel like okay. I don't know. Like when when I like saw them at a panel, I was kind of like. They made themselves prince? A little bit. Like, Like, I don't know. Not that he's a prince, but I guess he becomes a prince by the end. Yeah, because he marries her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So officially he's a prince. So, yeah. Anyway, we're talking about the music of the film. Um, What would you say is your favorite or any great musical moments? Uh, And this is another one where I love all of the songs so much, but I think I See the Light would probably be my favorite song. It's a great song. I mean, I I love her song. You know, um, 7 a.m. the usual morning lineup. I love, I love her her healing incantation. That is such a gr- great little, yeah, like lullaby cool. kind of, yeah. Yeah. I love Snuggly Duckling. I have a dream. Um, I love Mother Gothel's song. Mother Gothel is a, queen. a goddess. <laughs> I love Mother she's Gothel. our new Ursula, though, because if you think about it, she's For in that sure. vein. Yeah. Are you kidding? Her song, uh, Mother Knows Best, is like I remember seeing the movie and be like, okay, this is poor unfortunate souls. Yeah. Like it's it's not like it sounds like it or anything, but it's got like that spunk and that very that, like, like musical theater kind of like vaudeville. Well, super like, musical theater when you watch it. Like if you pay attention to the lighting in that scene, yes. it goes dark. Yes, and like it's kind of like lit like with spotlights. Yep. And very 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 theatrical. When well, she's so manipulative, like oh my God, like she's Ursula, a great character. she's just so terrible. Yeah. You know. She had my. She's a great villain song, mm-hmm. like a really. And w- once again, this always tends to happen for me. Some of the my favorite music are the reprises in this. So the mm-hmm. When Will My Life B- Begin reprise uh-huh. is so good, and they have this beautiful. Like there's a the camera moves so much in this mm-hmm. film. Like there, there's so much movement, it's insane. And, camera. and yeah, the camera. <laughs> uh, and the uh in that the the reprise that like circles all around her stuff. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then of course, my absolute favorite is uh the reprise of Mother Knows Best. I guess you'd call it Rapunzel Knows Best, where oh. she like, Oh my goodness, so she goes intense. Rapunzel Knows Best. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's she gets creepy. Yeah, she does. Yeah. It's it's I, that's one I would repeat in the car. Like, I would just put that on repeat and repeat it. The anger? Yes. I, I want to feel the anger. It was such on a my, great... In traffic, I'm, on my commute. I'm telling you, I love Mother Gothel. I think yeah. she's fantastic. I Absolutely. Do too. Now, I got to say, Rapunzel actually has quite a bit of uh, theme park representation, even more than mm. I realized when I started looking at it. Um, first of all, her tower... Mm-hmm. Is in both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom, which is so like it's part of the permanent architecture yeah. of Fantasyland now, which is incredible. If you think about it, I'm tr- now I'm trying to think. At least at Disneyland, I think she's the most modern permanent representation there. Would that mean there's so snow- Frozen doesn't have a permanent? In- not in our Fantasyland. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess where they were doing the meet and greets before, because they it's now sh- moved over. Yeah, yeah that's, right, that's changed. To the other park and. So yeah, like we've got the Rapunzel the, Tower, of course. The fantasy, fantasy Fair now. Fantasy Fair w- okay. has had different things, but that's like not permanent. That's a stage right, show. Like right. there's the tower is a structure. Yeah. In floor in Magic Kingdom, uh, especially the it's lit so beautifully and it's bigger and everything there. But Aww. I just think it's so cool that they have the tower in the parks. Um, one of the shows that is unique to Disneyland is Mickey and the Magical Map. Yes. And of course, her and Flynn, uh, Rapunzel and Flynn are both in that show for the best sequence of the show. I really love the update that they did to the song, too. Um, how they add that like echo part. Yeah. And um, I just think it's super, super pretty. Yeah. So yeah, I'm into it. 
Making the magical map uh, the best sequence, in my opinion, is this whole like princess sequence where mm-hmm. it starts with Pocahontas, then Mulan comes out, and then Flynn and Rapunzel. Yes. And then they all join together and sing. I, I see the I light, always right? get goosebumps, yeah. It's by far always, the best part of the show. It's so good. So um, they get some nice representation there. And of course, at Fantasy Fair, we've uh, talked about Fantasy Fair a bit before, but this is to the left of Sleeping Beauty Castle where they put on these like minimalist versions of the show. Love this one as well. And both Rapunzel and Flynn are in this. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Have you seen this one before? I have not. No. I really need to get over and watch it. It's so much fun. There's like We gotta go and just like camp out all day. I would watch watch them. I would totally watch them. Hopefully Uh, they'll rotate (laughs) the stories. (laughs) Yeah, that's I'm just I'm she's all over the place. Yeah. She's it's really interesting. She trades a lot, of course. She's always got representation, I feel like in Right? Yeah. Paint the night. She was. She was. Uh, had her, her hair lit up. Yes, lovely. So cool. Over in Magic Kingdom, she is part of the Fantasy Fair parade in a kind of cool way, because there's a float that features a lot of the different princesses, uh, including like Frozen and stuff, and Beauty and the Beast. And so, like, mm-hmm. they don't have their own little section, but Rapunzel does. Yay! I mean. <laughs> That's kind of They awesome. appreciate. <laughs> they do. And they're singing your favorite song. Or one of I your favorite songs. I have a dream. Songs. Right. And they're like swinging on those things, Yeah, they have things, these giant right? pendulum yeah. axes or something. It's fun. It's a fun little And it's print. crazy. Like the mime guy is like dancing around. <laughs> that mime character is so weird. <laughs> it is kind of it weird. Is the, it's so random and weird. Uh, uh, I don't. We You're never, not into the ruffians and thugs. I'm not, though. not at all. I love it. I love the tiny unicorn. I love it. Yeah, no, that, that they're not my. I thing. love Hook. His yeah. name's Hook, I think, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, Two Hooks in the Disney fandom now. Hey. And uh, they both play piano. Oh. Because Captain Hook Captain plays Hook piano. Plays piano. Yeah, that that's right. Yeah. Maybe it's a thing with a hook. Maybe it makes you better at piano. I don't know, but it's I such def- a challenge. You have to like overcome it, and then you get really good. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, let's see. So, of course, you were mentioning the ruffians. Part yes. of Mickey's royal friendship fair at the Magic Kingdom as well. I want to see this in person. It's so awesome. This is the stage show in front of Cinderella Castle. I wish that we had it here. Well, what do you think of Donald as a ruffian? Um, no? Okay. <laughs> oh, you don't like it? No, it's cute because of, like, the don't they make, like, a joke based on duckling, like, Oh, yeah, yeah. They make, like, some... I think that's super cute. Oh, it's because the place is called the S- Snuggly... Snuggly Duck- Duckling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're probably not going to like me very much when Let's I say it. this. I want to hear it. I'm not, like, a big Donald fan. He's um, okay. I'm okay with that. He's really, like, angry. Okay, whenever I watched the cartoons as a kid, I would get so frustrated. And, like, because, you know, his theme is just... He's always frustrated. But that's the thing. It's not always. It's really selective. He's either really happy or really frustrated. I feel like all I remember is just seeing him like get all red and like angry all the time. I agree. But and then I was like, I just want happy. Like think of <laughs> when you, I was a kid. Though. You've seen Mickey's Christmas Carol, right? Yeah, it's he was been a like while. he was like the joyful uncle, nephew, and he was he was the one trying yeah. to get Scrooge to love Christmas, and like I don't know, I feel like. And he's really sweet to his nephews sometimes. I just think he's, he's a re- great character. He's bipolar. He's, That's he's what it comes just down not to. like my personal. I'm yeah, not a big fine. like goof. I love Mickey, but I'm not a big like goofy Donald person. All right. Yeah, I I appreciate. How do you feel about Daisy? <laughs> okay, good. Because <laughs> I was gonna say, if you love Daisy, and I'm not even like a big mini fan. She's cute. I like her, but like I'm a okay, Mickey fan. Okay, leave your comments below. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> for Tracy, I'm sorry. who hates the the I Fab don't, Five. I don't hate them, but I'm like honestly though, like I'm in it for like when I was ever since I was a kid, I'm in it for the princesses. Like that's, that's what princesses. sucked me into Disney, and I love Mickey. I, I was really gonna say, just Mickey. don't talk crap about Mickey, and we'll be cool. I love all of them. I I it's they're just not my like. Big favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all right. I appreciate that. Hey, we, we appreciate your opinion. You're not here. into the, the ruffians and thugs. I don't like I don't like so. them at all. And I, I it actually frustrates me how featured they are. Mm-hmm. Like honestly the most forgettable song on the show in the film. Not to me. Okay, I'm glad you like it. I, like I it. Ladies and gentlemen, clearly co- someone doesn't care about having dreams. Talk about like <laughs> no, talk about like liking not liking angry people. They're they're angry. They're not angry. They're so happy and fun. They are both. They're bipolar they have as dreams. well. They're bipolar. Uh, 
But yeah, Tangled the, is also has musical representation on the Disney Magic cruise ship, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't seen that. I love that they create these musicals for the, each ship has like its own musical. There's Aladdin, there's Frozen, mm -hmm. there's Tangled and oh, I'm missing one. I don't know. Can't uh, remember. Uh, or maybe they don't have a, a show musical. Beauty and the Beast? Maybe one of them has Beauty and the Beast. I can't even remember. I don't that. know. I wouldn't know. I don't really go on cruises. I'm a mermaid who gets seasick, guys. Oh, do you? I do. Nice. I would do it for a Disney cruise, though. I think if I would, I would find some sea bands or something and do it. But I went on one cruise and I was sick the whole time. Oh, that's miserable. I know. That's I mean, not fun. Sad. Dramamine the whole time. And then you're, yeah, and then I'd just be asleep you're sleeping the whole time. You're sleeping the whole time. time. You know, it's miserable. <laughs> but um, anything, uh, th like we said, she does have quite a bit of representation in the parks. But is there anything you'd like to see? Anything that they don't have already that you're like, uh, don't say a dark ride. I have the same. A dark Every ride? time I always want a dark ride. Well, uh, okay, what kind of dark ride? Are we gonna really, be? Are we gonna be in a boat? No, I haven't put a lot of thought into what I want. Like, what more I want from Tangled for the parks? I haven't. I, I don't know because I feel like we've gotten a lot of. We have gotten some good stuff. You know, so I feel like I. I feel like they are represented pretty well because it's new. So it's you know they've done a pretty good job. It's I feel new ish. Like. Yeah, it's seven years at this point. I know. Well, in I mean, as far as like Disney classic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's like a new classic, I feel like. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the type of theme park experience I want to see that I haven't seen yet is some sort of nighttime spectacular where they really feature the lanterns. We've seen oh. this a little bit well, in map projection. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that part of the, not enough. the uh, fireworks, right? Is yeah, it, the, the uh, Disneyland Forever fireworks had them. and To me, it's like I don't even watch the fireworks. I just watch the, the projections. So. Well, here's the thing. They have two perfect options these days. Did you happen to see World of Color uh, this past Christmas? I did not. Okay. Well, there's this beautiful sequence. I've mentioned this before on the show, but they release up into the air basically these, like, suds bubble objects. So Snow? No, it's not snow. It's not snow. It's it's like the same. They make like they made giant hearts out of them. So oh, like the cute. size of like a dinner plate, if not bigger than that. Oh dang! Yeah, and they would be released, and they just started floating up into the air. How cute! And they had tons of them released, and all I thought was, how are these not used for the tangled lanterns? Yeah, yet? Like, that'd be really cool. Something like that, and or come on, we got drones now. Yeah. Ladies but I don't know if they're allowed to fly them at Disneyland. I don't know. Well, do it in Florida. I don't care where you yeah. do it. Do it somewhere. I care because I can't get to Florida well, <laughs> as often as you can. Well, I don't go that often either. But um, I'm so greedy. I'm like, do it here. <laughs> I would love for them to do it here. But I'm just saying I would like to see the lanterns in some legitimate form. Yeah. Some tangible object that could be touched. Uh, not a projection. So that's really the thing I want. But eco-friendly because... Um, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Real lanterns would be super cool, but kind of dangerous. Are they? I don't I don't know. Like people, There's fire in them. I know, but I'm sure they extinguished at some point, right? Yeah. I've released, I've released lanterns before, but it was in another country. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they just, they float. What I've always felt should have, before like the, the drone thing became popular, um, I was like, why don't they have some sort of thing where, like, they float up behind Sleeping Beauty Castle but can be, like, rolled back. Like, they're on a string that can't uh, be seen. And like can a just... kite. Yeah. Kind of. But I guess it would need to have some sort of motor or helium or yeah. something that would make it naturally rise. That'd be cool. And then pulled back down when, you know, unlit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I, I, those lanterns are beautiful. It's like the scene in the movie. I, oh, yeah. It's just, you know, that is like the moment. That's the Beauty and the Beast ballroom scene of yeah. that movie, you know. Now. Um, I think. <laughs> no, I would agree. I, I think it's an absolutely stunning scene. And yeah. Heck, I want an entire nighttime spectacular focused around <laughs> it. So uh, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. They they got to think about that. I'm I'm down. I'm DC I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. Like. <laughs> DCTC approved Lantern Nighttime Spectacular. Boom. That just <laughs> happened. Now, do you think that this would be a good Broadway musical? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's just going to be your answer Always. for all of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Disney princess. Yeah, I'm yeah. the Paula. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no I, I do, right? I mean, I feel like it's yeah. got all the elements to be – It's the music is amazing and you're not underwater. <laughs> True. And I mean, there is water, but I think they could do that scene. You could definitely do that scene. Yeah. On stage. Oh, my God, yeah. So, yeah, I think it'd be great. I think this would be – spectacular on stage uh i would really like to see this on stage and donna murphy who's the voice of mother gothel is a big broadway star so you're saying we could get her i mean i think that'd she, be pretty amazing she is understudying her she's the she's the performer who goes on for bet midler when she doesn't go on as dolly uh, I didn't know that and bet midler's doing hello dolly on broadway so yeah donna murphy is doing the performances that bet midler is not so she's a little busy, but, um, you know, Hello Dolly won't run forever. Yeah. And uh, Mother Gothel, I think, uh, I think it could work. I would love to I'm see I'm down. It. I am so down. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think it really lends itself to it. And, hey, additional music. I'm always oh, for it. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah, yeah. New Tangled music. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Good stuff. Now, uh, this one has not had any direct-to-video sequels, but it has had a lot of spinoff stuff. Well, it had the um, uh, the Tangled Ever, Af- Ever After. Is that yeah. what it was called? Yeah. Which was the short. And that was like a short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and then there's the t- Tangled Before Ever After TV movie. And then, of course, the Tangled TV series. So, I mean, Tangled has lived on quite a bit. Uh it, it's funny because I don't feel like the film was as much a hit as it is now. I feel the same way about Tiana. I kind of mm. feel like it lives, it's lived on beyond what I expected it to. And I'm I mean, thrilled I, by it. I felt so much hype when it first came out. But maybe it's also because like all of my friends were like super crazy about it like mm-hmm. I was. So we were just always talking about it. We all wanted to cosplay everyone, mm-hmm. you know, and we did. And yeah, and I feel like. I don't know, it just took up such a big space in our lives at the time. But, you know, yeah, it's hard to see when you're so excited about something. For me, when I'm, like, so into something, it's hard to see beyond, like, my friend group. Like, is everybody else super into it? I think they are. They seem like they are. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids that I knew were, like, obsessed with it at the time. So. Cool. You know what kind of spinoff I want to see? Like, legitimately want to see? I want to see a Mother Gothel backstory. (gasps) That would be so neat. I'm really curious. Like a Wicked, but it's like about Mother Gothel. Kind of, yeah. Like, like, why is she... First of all, how old is she when the movie starts? Like, she's old already. Yeah. Why is she so obsessed with staying young? Like, it's like two... We all want to stay young. None of us want to die type of thing. But, I mean, she's kind of insane. First of all, Mm -hmm. why is she alone? Like, yeah, there's got to be some, like, lost love story. Oh, oh it'd be sad. I'm all for it. <laughs> it. It would be really cool. Of course, she dies in, in the film. And <gasps> Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler, yeah. Um, she falls to her death, which is very classic Disney. But, yeah. she, uh, you know what? Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe she didn't die because she disappears. I thought that you, like, no. I have no idea where she goes. I mean, there's a lot of magic entangled, so like anything. Yeah, but could she happen. doesn't have magic. Well, no, but I mean, like there is magic in that world. They've sure. established it, so like whenever there's a world with magic in it, like anything can kind of happen. I guess, but I was, I never, you know I, if, know, I feel like if she had magic, she would be able to keep herself young. She wouldn't need Rapunzel. No, but like, may, I don't know. Maybe there's like. I, I don't know. Everybody is disappearing. Circumstances magic. outside of. Her. In any I don't case, know. listen. I get. No, I think it's more like they're saying, "Okay, she's gonna plummet to her death. We don't want to see her, her yeah. corpse hit the ground." So, oh, so they're dark. like, eh, "She'll disappear, and we'll just have her cloak fall." Yeah. So she's somewhere missing a cloak. But uh, I mean, she got. Didn't she turn into like dust? She was so old, wasn't it? One of those. Like, didn't she like shrivel up and like. I know she got old again. I don't remember dust. No, I, I, maybe, I'm trying maybe, to remember. That, like, I I took it as disappeared. Oh, uh, I thought that she just got so old that she like disintegrated and like. <laughs> in case, I'm so morbid. In other <laughs> case, it doesn't happen that way. So I just feel like there's something. That, there's more to explore. I would love her to come back and though. That would be it's awesome. Great character. So there's more to explore with with her for sure. Oh, hey there. Sorry to be interrupting the show, but a lot of you have been writing in requesting that we make new episodes more frequently. As much as we would love to do that, we simply don't have the time. 
But here's the good news. You can interact with us every day of the week. No need to just wait for Wednesdays. Connect with us in places like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Also, we'd love to interact with you in the comment sections on YouTube and read your reviews on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show. So go ahead. No more waiting around for Wednesdays to have some DCTC time. You can find all of our links at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And of course, with Tangled, it's no different than the other Disney animated films where the original source is considerably different than uh, what Disney gave us. Yeah. This one especially. It's a little dark. Oh my goodness. Uh, Tell the story. I mean, I'm trying to remember how it even happens. Does it say even how she comes to be... Is she stolen away as a baby? Yeah, uh, n- I'm no, to she's stolen she comes- from the neighbors. So that's right. Okay, that's so right. the neighbors um, are pregnant, and they live next to a mean witch. And uh, here's what's really interesting: if you're familiar with Into the Woods, the Stephen mm-hmm. Sondheim musical, or the Disney the new movie, Disney. yeah. <laughs> um, New. I didn't realize Rapunzel's story in Into the Woods because as I was reading it, I was like, "Oh, I know all this stuff." But I know it from Into the Woods. Like, yeah. That, I it's thought closer. that. closer. Way closer. Yeah. I thought that that made up a lot of stuff. But no, it was the the witch lived next door to these this couple who, they were pregnant. And uh, the husband sneaks over, steals a Rapunzel plant. Mm-hmm. And um, is basically, as punishment is told, you need to give me your, your firstborn. And, and they just do it. Yeah. <laughs> So they, do. <laughs> so they, the witch gets Rapunzel. And that's why she names her Rapunzel. Is- yes. And uh, at 12 years old, uh, puts her up in a tower. Mm-hmm. And it's some crazy, crazy stuff going on. So give- the prince stuff is so disturbing. Oh, there's I- there's some hanky panky going yeah, on. Yeah. Like he, he repeatedly visits her. Mm-hmm. And apparently they're not chased. And she gets pregnant. Mm-hmm. And the witch gets angry with her, right? And and throws her out of the tower, pregnant. Mm-hmm. And, and then she goes to like to the woods to have the baby. And then isn't it like twins. two years? Twins, twins or babies, I should say. And then she's like raising the babies in the woods alone. Yeah. Like lost. And And the witch tricks the prince into climbing the hair. Yeah, she cuts her hair yeah. off. She you know, and Tricks him into thinking Rapunzel's in the tower. Then he falls from the tower, falls on thorns, goes blind. Yeah. Oh. Like, this is some weird and stuff. He, and isn't it like two years later or something? Yeah, he it's does a long time. find Rapunzel and their children. Yeah, and guess and how his eyesight comes back? Does she cry? On tears. Him? Yes. Yep. Healing she, tears. So that's the closest thing to the movie. Yes. <laughs> in Entangled, uh, her tears end up saving Flynn. Who is not a prince, but it's, it's totally different. But uh, well, and the hair, the hair gets cut. The hair gets cut, but it doesn't turn brown in the original. But it, it's very different, very weird. Like I yeah. said, if you're familiar with Into the Woods, it's remarkably close to that story, mm-hmm. uh, which I really appreciated. Yeah, um, totally. But Tangled, they were smart. I mean, the reason supposedly they called it Tangled and not Rapunzel was once again so young boys would go see it mm-hmm. and not think it was a princess movie, mm-hmm. but. I will say, since it's so drastically different than the story of Rapunzel, I think it makes sense. It's kind of like Tangled is a story of Rapunzel and the world of Rapunzel, but not mm-hmm. really the story of Rapunzel. So yeah, another one of the things that actually stayed the same in the Disney animated film is uh, the name Gothel. Yeah. She was Dame Gothel, I believe, in the original story source. So I thought that was kind of cool and kind of pretty surprising as well. That is really but cool. I think that's a cool name. I wonder if, if Gothel means anything. I don't, I know. don't know. But it's kind of a... It sounds like a villain's name. It definitely or a witch's does. Name, so I like that has so, goth in it. Yeah. But can I just say about the prince? Like yeah. the fact that he is like regularly climbing up her hair and they're hanging out. Hanging out. Wink wink. When, why did he never rescue her? Why did he never be like, hey, well, let's cut your hair and, and attach it to something? No, he was trying to together. rescue her. So he was sending her, what was he sending her? He was um, I don't remember she him. was supposed to. He was giving her some sort of fabric to weave a ladder. He was. Yeah, I don't so that, remember that part. That was part of the process, but okay. the problem is that the witch cut on. She before. had. She just cut her own hair. She what? couldn't cut her hair. Her hair Why is not? because there are a lot of girls out there who refuse to touch their hair. If it's life or death, it's just hair. She wasn't dying up there. She was, 
She was just lonely. Uh, maybe she was happy where she was. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like we said, it's very very different from yeah. uh, Tangled. But um, I love Tangled. Me I'm too. I'm a huge fan of Tangled. So, so much. Anything else you want to add? I mean, if you haven't seen it. See, Tangled. We can't be friends, so go watch it. Those, those are some fight <laughs> I'm sorry. If you ever see Tracy in public and uh, you haven't seen Tangled, just be like, just FYI. No. We can't be friends. No, but I've had a few friends tell me that they haven't seen it yet. And I was like, what are you waiting for? You're missing out. It's so good. It's very, very good. So I love it. Um, anyway, I think that's what I got for Tangled here. So that means it's trivia time. Hey folks, and welcome to today's Trivia Time with Aaron Wallace from AaronWallaceOnline.com, the author of The Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom, The Thinking Fan's Guide to Walt Disney World Epcot, and Hocus Pocus and Focus, as well as many, many film and music reviews at Aris on La- Aris- AaronWallaceOnline.com. That's a mouthful, Aaron. Welcome to the show. You got, you're like 99% there, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. It's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, today we're here for some Spaceship Earth trivia. I know Epcot is one of your favorite parks, and uh, and of course you wrote a book about it, so I expect some good trivia from you, sir. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I have to say, trivia is not my forte. I'm not like uh, I'm not. What do they say? It's not. It's it's the forest, not the trees, right? I'm not like a like a detail brained person. Honestly, I'm kind of more in your boat as well. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know how trivia became part of the show, to be honest, but uh, it, it has and, and it's stuck. So uh, I enjoy it. And I always say, you know, some people who come on the show get really hung up like, oh, I really want to trick you or or I want to get it right. I'm like, don't even worry about it. Like, I don't care if it's right or wrong. It's, this is all of us learning something new, hopefully. So And it's fun to listen to. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, so you got one for me? Okay, sure. Uh who was the, and this can be a little bit of a, a trick question as well. Uh, who was the original narrator of Spaceship Earth? Ah, oh, the original. Was it Walter Cronkite? No. Okay, he's one of them. So there was, it was Jeremy Irons before him? After Walter Cronkite. Oh, so there's Cronkite and then Jeremy Irons, and then uh, we've got currently but I, Dame But Jimmy I will Dance. tell you, yes, there is a little bit of a. Uh, a controversy or a mystery as to who this first narrator was. So is it, is it a famous name? Uh, if you're a sci-fi geek, maybe, but otherwise, no. Not a household name. Leonard uh, Nimoy? No. Oh, he would have been great, though. But no. Uh, or if you can guess even um, the sci-fi franchise that this person is best known for. I'm going to guess Star Trek. Yeah, that's one of them. So, uh, you want me to just tell you the, the names? Well, you say it's funny because you say it's not a household name, but it's somebody that came from Star Trek. So, I feel but, like most people from Star Trek are household names. Yeah, no, he's like deep in the weeds of Star Trek. Like, he worked um, like behind the scenes, and then his acting roles were like small, like lesser known roles. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, you, you would primarily know this person's name if you were like clued into the debate that goes on in message boards and I like who is the real Spaceship Earth narrator. Okay. Uh, yeah. No idea. Who is it? So the two likeliest candidates uh, are Vic Perrin, uh, who is best known as, I believe he was the narrator on the Outer Limits sci-fi TV series. Uh, and uh, Lawrence Dobkin, or Dobkins, I forget, Dobkin, I think. Uh, and uh, he worked with Star Trek. So you, you had Star Trek, right? Uh, and they uh, both have voiced other Disney theme park attractions, right? So, like, one had worked at Universe of Energy, one had worked on uh, the original Hall of Presidents narration. Uh, but the weird thing is, there are all these like Disney authorities out there who uh, disagree as to who the narrator was i feel like that has to be in somebody's record somewhere has anybody like written into dave smith about this well jeff if you look at there's actually an appendix in the back of uh the thinking fans guide to walt disney world epcot that kind of delves into this and so i did actually contact the archives but uh, for example marty sklar and the archives disagree on this and you know marty sklar is like hey i was there yeah that's very interesting 
That is interesting. That was an impossibly hard question, though, I realize. And uh, just to let you know, you're a thousand percent correct. I have no idea who either of those people are. I did not recognize those <laughs> names. So, so there's that. Uh, something fun that I love about Spaceship Earth is um, the audio animatronic figures. Uh, some of them were actually designed for a different attraction as far as the, the molds are concerned. Do you know where some of the molds for Spaceship Earth came from, another attraction at Walt Disney World. I believe uh, there might be some in there from, from more than one, but I, I think the answer is the Hall of Presidents. That is correct, the Hall of Presidents. Uh, of course, they've, they've put facial hair on them and changed their wardrobe and such so that they don't look like the presidents. I personally never noticed this. I read this and was very surprised. Uh, n not really surprised when I thought about it, but uh, I do think it's kind of funny to think like the presidents are hidden within. Uh, do you um, happen? Sorry, go ahead. I was, there's an almost president or a, a, an almost was president hidden or not really hidden, but there's just an animatronic in the Renaissance scene who looks exactly like John Kerry. And it's definitely not intentional. It was oh. there before John Kerry was like well-known, but um, that's fine. I'll have, to, I'll have to send you the picture. Yeah. It's like do my you, favorite thing before in that room. Do you happen to know where president Eisenhower can be seen inside? Oh my Spaceship gosh. Earth? I don't know. Let me, all right, I'm picturing president Eisenhower. And now I'm picturing him as an animatronic and trying to place that face with different hair in the right. <laughs> uh, gosh, I don't know. I'm going to guess that uh, um, he's one of the, uh, in the Greek scene, like where they used to be like the thespians and now they're like looking at math. And, yeah. He's a Renaissance lute player. Oh, yeah. So oh. kind of fun. There's a there's a lot of reused animatronics around the parks, which, you know, economically makes sense. And let's face it, most of us would never notice this unless we read some weird fact somewhere. So it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, anyway, thanks so much for coming on the show, Aaron. Always appreciated. Of course, you can catch up with all of Aaron's work at AaronWallaceOnline.com. Thanks a bunch, Aaron. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Excellent. Hope you folks enjoyed the trivia this week. Uh, of course, between episodes, you should uh, connect with us on social media. This week, I want to mention our Instagram. Are you following us on Instagram? D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C. -E Every day we bring you new, original Disney photos there, so make sure you go check that out. Uh, you can find the links at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. I think that's going to do it for us this week, huh? That's it. Okay, see you next time, folks. Bye! Bye. Thanks for watching Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day! <laughs>